Hi, I'm Brian and I'm going to show you how a motorcycle clutch works. I'm going to explain how it relates to a car clutch. A clutch is basically a means or a method or a way to disconnect an engine that has to be running all the time from a drivetrain that is engaged and disengaged like if you stop at a stoplight or a stop sign or if you're at the starting line on a race bike. So let's show you some of uh, what's going on here, shall we? So the way that a motorcycle clutch works, or the way that it's set up, is you have friction discs like this. These basically have brake pad material on each side of them. And they're sandwiched in between what we just refer to as steels, but there's a steel disc. And you notice a big major difference between a steel disc, let me wipe that off so that you recognize that as a steel disc. The difference between a, you'll notice is a wet clutch, it's immersed in oil like in an automatic transmission. So the steels, and these are a little bit cooked, so it's a good thing we got new ones, um, go on either side of the friction discs and they get squeezed. So if I were to squeeze this hard enough, you wouldn't be able to slide it. But if I let go, then you can slide it. See how that works? Now you'll notice that these have teeth on the outside of the friction discs, the brake pad type, and then the steels, um, which are like a brake rotor on a car, uh, have teeth on the inside. So the way these go on is you do a friction disc or a brake pad first and then a brake rotor. And you see how there's teeth on the outside and then teeth on the inside. So the way that these are squeezed, you men I mentioned earlier that I squeeze down on it and then you can't turn it. The way that that's accomplished on a dirt bike is with these springs. These springs are pretty heavy duty. You go to squish them by hand and I can get it about that far. So that's squeezing as hard as I can on that little spring. So then we got uh, six of those that are all holding it in. So this is the bottom piece of bread. These are all the condiments. And the top piece of bread on our sandwich, I'm using way too many analogies, aren't I? So this is the top piece of bread, and you'll notice that you got six holes and six holes for the bolts. It goes on like this, with all of the fixings, all the condiments, all this kind of stuff, you know, brake rotor, brake pad stuff in there, and you just tighten them down so that it holds it all tight. Now, when you press the clutch or squeeze the clutch on the left-hand grip of a motorcycle, this goes for street bikes as well as dirt bikes, it causes this to go up and down. Yeah, it's got a little slide bearing. You can see this right here. Zoom in real close to that. So this is your throwout bearing, and there's a rod that's attached to the throwout that's down inside of there. We'll fish that up with a magnet and we'll show you what that looks like. What this does is it pushes up. Every time you squeeze the clutch, it pushes, and it's got a lot of leverage to it. So it disengages the clutch. So what it does basically is it takes this top piece of bread, the springs are holding it by these little cups in here. You can see the level there. So you got springs that are in here like that and the bolts are holding that down. So this is held in basically by spring pressure because the bolts are only holding the springs, the springs hold this down. So there's a washer here and then this actually pushes this up. So you squeeze, it pushes up. So when it pushes up, it causes them to be able to slip, like when I wasn't gripping it very hard. So let's talk about the different parts of this. Let's zoom out a little bit, and we'll look at the inside versus the outside. Now the inside, if I turn this, you can see the wheels turning for the bike. But it's easy to turn because I'm not fighting any compression forces in the motor with the pistons. So this part is the transmission or the gear side. And then this outer part is the engine side. Now because everything's sitting on top of each other, they're both going to turn, but you'll just have to trust me that this is free to turn either way. And this is really hard to turn the outside. It doesn't want to go at all. So we grab the Kickstarter. The outside's the motor side, so I can even hold that there. See? See how the outside goes around? So the way we hook up the engine side or the outside to the gear side or the uh, transmission side is through these clutch packs and when you have them uh, smashed together by the springs go ahead and zoom back out again so if it's really squeezing tight it's just like one solid piece that hooks both of them together so that both turn together when you let off the clutch 
So that's the way that works. We'll show you neutral just for kicks and giggles. So right now we're in first gear. So if I push up halfway and rotate that. So now we're in neutral so it can spin. So if it's all locked up and the engine's rotating, we're in neutral, you'll notice that the wheel's not turning. So anyway, that's how a motorcycle clutch works. So let's talk a little bit about a car or an automatic transmission. Basically, automatic transmission has three of these in it. You got three different clutch baskets is what we call it. This would be the basket and uh, like I say, we got our frictions and our steels. So the way that a car works is you have a double-sided uh, brake pad material friction disc. It's called a clutch disc. And the clutch disc is sandwiched between two metals. Um, one is a pressure plate that's spring-loaded. And then the other one is the flywheel on the back side of the car. On the back of the engine, you have a flywheel. And as the flywheel turns around all the time, you know, if it's not engaged, then nothing happens, or if the transmission is in neutral, nothing happens. The way that a clutch works on the car is that it's got a pilot bearing like this, and it's on the back side of the transmission, so engine is here, transmission is here. This is the flywheel on the back, a big heavy metal spinning disc that helps give it uh, rotational momentum. And uh, so basically you've got your clutch disc, your two-sided brake pad material. And then this is the, the spring actuated pressure plate. And it's about as heavy as the flywheel, it's on the back side. It actually bolts to the outside around the disc into the, uh, I'm losing vocabulary fast here. <laughs> is that a Sobe? I got a sugar buzz and a sugar crash. So anyway, uh, this is the flywheel and your springs of your pressure plate and everything bolt onto there and you've got little spring-loaded fingers all the way around and the pressure plate pushes on the outside. So what happens is you have an input shaft to the transmission that plugs into the middle disc. There's a little uh, disc in the middle with a keyed up or splined connection that goes into the input shaft of the transmission. So that's pushing the clutch down and this can spin freely, you know, as opposed to the rest, and this one's up to the input shaft of the transmission when you let off the clutch, it just sandwiches it by spring pressure. So that's how a clutch works on a motorcycle, and a little intro on the car one. We'll have to do another car one later, but uh, yeah, that's uh, the reason why we have to have a clutch on a gasoline engine is because gasoline engine has to be running all the time. On a manual, tr on the uh, electric car, you can go ahead and put the camera on me. On an electric car, you don't need a clutch, and the reason why is because nothing has to be spinning all the time. An engine has a weighted crankshaft, it's got all these moving parts, has to have a flywheel to keep the momentum so it doesn't stall. Um, with an electric car, um, you just run current, and you just say current on, current off, current on, current off. All the power is stored in a sitting state in the batteries, so you don't even need a clutch. It's kind of interesting. Um, Jay Leno did a car, it's called the Jet Car. I'm going to put a link in the description below. Um, but with his Jet Car, I don't think they had a clutch on that. I don't remember exactly, but that had to be running all the time. You had to like ride the brakes to keep it under 60 miles an hour. It was a biodiesel uh, type thing. It ran on uh, kerosene or jet fuel or whatever and then transferred on to biodiesel. So it was the, an economic uh, or environmentally friendly uh, fuel vehicle, alternate fuel vehicle. It's kind of fun. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to click like, subscribe. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.